All right, Jesse on fire. Welcome back. So going into UFC 287, we got a lot of uh, a lot of topics to talk about. What? A lot of topics to talk about. But one of them that I think is fascinating is the moment that Israel Adesanya changed the entire game for himself, right? Because if you're going to look at Israel Adesanya's entire career, you're going to see a few defining moments. You're going to see when he won the title. You're going to see when he defended the title. You are going to see a lot of things that, uh, that contributed to what Izzy status is right now, and not the least of which is Alex Pereira coming into the UFC because obviously he had already beat him twice in kickboxing, and then now he beat him again, and he knocked him out in, uh, in MMA. And I would say if there was an inciting incident that, that conjured Alex Pereira to come over to UFC, which there was, and I'm going to show you guys that video right now because Alex is like, you guys want to know why I'm in the UFC right now? I'm going to show you this. And it's something Izzy did. It's an interview that Izzy gave. And Alex is like, oh, is that right, guy? And so he came in. Now, look, if, if Alex Pereira wins this fight, okay, which he very well, I mean, I would say, in my opinion, he's a favorite. I don't understand how, how Izzy would be. And I'm rooting for Israel Adesanya for sure. I don't understand how Alex Pereira would not be the favorite when he's won three. He's 3-0 against him with two finishes. The last two. The last two were stoppages. How, how on earth could Izzy be the favorite? That makes no sense. But, uh, but nonetheless, it's like, you know, bottom line, if, if Izzy did not have Alex Pereira enter the fray, he is on his way to becoming the greatest middleweight of all time because, uh, he had been so dominant. Now, some of his fights have been boring, whatever, but bottom line, he had been retaining the title over and over and over. And he baited Alex into the UFC. Now, if he ends up winning right here, great, right? If he ends up winning on Saturday, fantastic. If he doesn't, then this is on him, and I want to show you guys why. Now, we're going to go into that interview in a second, but first I wanted to say, if you don't mind subscribing to the channel, please do that if you are a regular viewer of my content. matter of fact, just, if you're not subscribed, just please do it, dude. I mean, YouTube is purging my subscribers right now for some reason. I go to every single video of mine, and they're like, oh, you added 30 subscribers on this video. You added 90 on this one. You added 100 on this one, and somehow my subscriber base has gone down every day for the last five days. They're literally, it's a, you know, YouTube, sometimes they like purge old subscribers. You should, actually, if you were subscribed, double check that you're still, uh, still subscribed. And if you haven't yet, please click subscribe. It's free and it's incredibly helpful to the channel, like the content, and let me know what you guys think about this. So let's jump into it right now. So let's watch this because this is the moment that uh, Israel Adesanya baited Alex Pereira into the UFC. <laughs> Assim que o Israel entrou para o UFC, é claro que eu, que eu fiquei de olho, porque eu já tinha o interesse, né, de, de lutar MMA. Tem vídeo que yeah. postaram, né, que entrevista que o Israel de Senna fez, me motivou muito, né. Foi my first and only ever knockout loss, and then my only back-to-back -back loss as well. So for me it was um, a lot of learning, a lot of learning. But I'm glad it happened because I wouldn't be here where it was. And even the same guy now doesn't. He watches all my fights, and every time I fight. Like clockwork, he'll try and put something out like, I beat this guy. But I've never, ever watched any of his fights, ever. So, at the end of the day, no one knows who the f*** he is. And he's going to be that guy when I'm world champion, when I'm a legend. He's going to be at some pub talking shit about, I beat that guy one time. Trying to get a suck from a crack hole or some shit. Te desafiado. Quando eu sou desafiado, ninguém me segura. Yep. Eu queria... I want a new challenge in the UFC was it. All right. So, yeah. So, Israel Adesanya himself baited Alex Pereira into the UFC. Which is interesting. Because, I mean, obviously, look, like, I'm not saying that Izzy wouldn't have done it if he knew that that was going to happen. But uh, I, I like to think of it. I mean, the reason why I'm rooting for Israel Adesanya is because I think that had he known that Alex was going to come and that he would lose the first fight and then he would get this opportunity to redeem it, that he would have done it anyway. I think he would have done it anyway. But nonetheless, it is on him, right? He said the thing. He said, this guy, now, the idea that Alex Pereira, who's a, a, a multi-weight world champion in kickboxing, would have been some guy in a bar that was just some guy in a bar. It's like, hey, man, I beat that guy one time. That's ridiculous. And it's possible that Izzy was trying to bait him into the UFC. Very likely, even, as a matter of fact. Very likely that that's exactly what he was doing. But nonetheless, he did it. It's like, hey, man, you got your wish. <laughs> like, you got your wish, dude. He's here. And he stopped you. 
Like you got your first loss and you, your first loss by stoppage in the UFC. And it's the same guy who's the only one who stopped you in kickboxing. Like this is Izzy's boogeyman. And I just think it's funny that you can look back and just go, oh, well, I mean, if we, if we need to know why this guy is not still in kickboxing, it's because Israel Adesanya went on television and said that he was a nobody. He literally called him a nobody. And it's like, all right, well, if I'm such a nobody, you should have no problem with me coming to the UFC. And like, when you really think about it like that, it's like, I don't know, for me, it changes things just in this way, right? Like, we all know that the UFC wanted to make that fight, right? Like, we all know the UFC wanted to make that fight. We all know that Izzy probably wants that fight back, but I never really thought too much about what Alex is doing, you know, because he's such a, like a sullen guy. He just walks around. He's like, I train, I kill. But when you really think about it through that lens and you're like, you think about Alex is at home. He sees an interview and Izzy's like, this guy's a nobody. He watches all my fights. I never watch any of his fights. And you think about him like, is that right? You know? Oh, is that right? Dude, I'm going to the UFC. And then you think about what happened. It's like, damn, son. Damn, son. You fucked up. You fucked up, Izzy. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Maybe you should have left that dog alone. You know? But then we wouldn't get to see a fight on Saturday. So I definitely am glad that you didn't, you know, I'm glad that you didn't because uh, I am a fan of the sport and I am excited to watch this thing unfold. I'm about to interview Jake Shields here shortly. What do you guys know about that, dude? And then I'm going to go to jujitsu. So that's what I'm going to do today. But I am, uh, I don't know. I mean, I just wanted to point out that uh, the reason that Izzy is facing the boogeyman is because he said he's a nobody and the nobody saw it and then came and took his belt. So Anyway, that's what I got. Short video. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell. Tell all of your friends. I love you guys very, very much. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Thank you. Bye-bye.